Hey, this is Todd. This is going to be a quick video. It's sort of a placeholder. I'm working on a much longer Dungeon Master screed, just catching up on a couple of weeks that I've missed. But it's taking me forever, and Premiere seems to think it's going to take hours and hours and hours, increasing every time I leave to uh, export that video. So I thought, well, what else can I do in the meantime? Didn't really have an idea. Uh, there, there have been, there'd been something I'm kind of th that I've been thinking about doing a video on, which shows on the Five Room Dungeons. And it just so happened that I was surfing on Reddit, and there was a post asking about, essentially, they were in a wilderness area, and this DM, they knew what they were going to do at the end of the session. They knew what the kind of climax of the session was going to be, but they didn't know, they weren't sure how to fill up the time to, uh, to get there. So they were looking for ideas. And I, I, I threw out some suggestions, uh, but thinking about it afterwards, I thought this is really a perfect opportunity to use the uh, five room dungeon design because it's i think that's the perfect use case for it when your party's entering a location that doesn't require doesn't need or you don't have time to because maybe you're improving a full physical layout five room dungeon is an excellent design pattern to uh to a different, it's a different way to look at dungeons and locations, which doesn't require all that work of actually piecing together physical layout. So maybe the best way to explain is just to get into it. I'll run through the five elements that make up the five rooms, and then maybe I can spend a couple minutes riffing on using it in this particular use case, which would be, let's say we're entering a wilderness hex and we need stuff to fill the time. It's They're not moving through the hex, so it's not a case where we want to rely on hex crawl type rules. They're going to be in there mucking around. We need things for them to do. How do we do this? First, let's look at the five room dungeons. Really, when they say five rooms, it can be five rooms. It's, it's really more about five concepts that make up the dungeon. And you'll see what I mean. They have a very narrative sense to it, but you can align them in different ways. They don't, you don't have to run in a linear pattern. In fact, there, I forget which website is broke down to all kinds of different patterns you can make of these five elements. But the first one is sort of the entrance or the guardian. Now, in all these rooms, you can generally run the challenges that are applied to the names and how I'm going to describe them using anything you want to. They could be uh, skill type challenges, they could be social challenges, they could be combat challenges. It could be anything you want. But those, the, this one is, uh, it could be a place where you're putting you know, as, as the, the title of this conceptual area, you know, like the Guardian. It could be something that is, uh, you know, antagonistic that is blocking the way forward. It could be a puzzle sort of element. It could be a uh, just, yeah, a, a puzzle or a skill challenge, but it is what is essentially what is stopping the party or what, how was this place not invade? You know, in, in, in dungeon speak, they talk about it like, well, why hasn't this dungeon just been raided to death? What is preventing it from being, have being already being exploited? In a broader sense, it's really, well, what is preventing the party from moving into this space? There should be some kind of challenge there. Maybe just finding the low, finding the entrance itself is the challenge, or maybe something moving through it, or again, something antagonistic. We don't know. That's something you have to just kind of riff on what you want, but there, what is blocking the party from moving forward? The second one. The second one they call a puzzle or a role-playing challenge. It is probably the one element that is really not, I think, not suited for combat, just because many of the other elements you can put in terms of combat, but this is really one that I think you want to set aside wherever you place it in your in your dungeon or in your location as one that will reward role-playing skills, what have you. Now, essentially, I look at it, particularly when I'm going to talk about it later and looking at the forest encounter, I'm really going to look at it in terms of the puzzle of moving through the space, right? It could be a labyrinth of rooms and corridors. So what is your strategy to move through there? We're not mapping out everything. So we're not interested in the party doing all the left, right, left, straight, left again, second left, another right. That's going to get them to the goal. We're thinking of what on a conceptual way. This is where the kind of puzzle part comes in. Is what conceptually can you do using your skills, using your brain to figure out how to get through a labyrinth? Maybe you look at it and go, okay, we're in a real kind of labyrinth. Maybe we'll do the whole trick of using chalk or string or something so that we can see where we've gone. Do something like that. That would be one way to tackle that particular problem. Maybe it's something else. Maybe it's something. Well, now they have to go. Maybe the whole dungeon or this area is in a giant pit. You know, a cenote or just a, a big a tube from a purple worm. How do they get around in that space? How do they navigate it? That could be the puzzle. So, it, but we want to reward stuff that's probably outside of combat because almost every other challenge can be expressed in terms of combat. 
maybe this one you want to make sure if you're going to have a lot of comments in these other spots, save this one for some of the other things. And again, role-playing challenges, maybe you could even throw things in there. Indiana Jones falling in the pit of snakes, right? The challenge there is, it's obviously it's a physical challenge that you're dealing with the snakes, but there's also that mental challenge, the role-playing challenge of you have this phobia of snakes, how do you deal with that? So that's all things you can have in that puzzling area. Third section is a, call it a setback, could be a twist. Essentially, you know, what is it that, you know, the party's sort of progressing, what is it that's going to kind of bring them back a little bit? What changes the game? What raises the stakes? If maybe if they're sneaking through a manor house and they've figured out the, the layout in the quarters, now the alarm bells go off or something unexpected shows up. What could be that setback in, in that space to kind of, like I said, raise the stakes, uh, insert a twist? It's a difficult, right? A new obstacle has appeared that maybe they couldn't, they couldn't have foreseen. What is that? That could be in there. And again, it, you know, it could be combat. It could be, oh, creatures show up that weren't expected. It could be, you know, uh, someone triggers a type of trap that changes the, the terrain. It could be, it could be a number of things. It could be environmental. Guards show up. How do you deal with that, right? It could be anything, but it's something that's going to make their life difficult. It's definitely supposed to be kind of a twist, something that changes the game a bit. And if you can raise the stakes and, and, and if you go from, you know, you're, you're at this level, you've kind of figured it out, and now it, it increases it, that's kind of good. If you look at it, it's really a narrative kind of slope. You can read these really in saying kind of, if you, look, if you ever look at story structure, it really follows that. So you go from the kind of entrance to this, you kind of peak the wave when you figured out that puzzle from, from the second element, and now this third element kind of, bam, starts to bring you down, kind of pushing things the other way, causing hardship, causing causing a, a, another obstacle, and then you're going to, bam, hit, the, you're going to beat that, and then you're going to kind of crest towards the uh, climax. Brings us to the fourth element, which is the final challenge, final guardian. What is preventing the party from reaching the, finding the source, finding the treasure, getting to whatever they were trying to get to in this space. If they were trying to get the, the, the Lord's treasure box, then what is that last thing that's stopping them from getting to the treasure box? What's that last bit? Again, it could be a puzzle. It could be a social encounter. It could be a skill challenge. Obviously, it could be a combat challenge. Any of those things, what is that final thing that's, you know, the culmination of everything they've come before in this particular location? Here it is. And then, however that goes, if, assuming they triumph, Fifth, fifth, uh, fifth concept is, is the resolution, the prize. What did they win? What did they discover? What did they find out? It doesn't have to be as simple as treasure. It doesn't have to be as simple as them getting exactly what they want. But essentially, is the, their purpose was to go in and do something and hear that purpose is now revealed and fulfilled in some way. So what, what is that? So now we have these five areas. Now, you can do a lot of interesting things. You don't have to put them all in this in, in the order that I put them in, I just kind of went through numerical order, but you can, again, like I mentioned before, you can sort of move these around. You can also nest them into each other. So you can talk about the entrance guardian having essentially elements of the five room dungeon basically inside itself. So within that guardian area, you could have another entrance guardian, a, a puzzle or role playing challenge, you know, a, a setback. And then the climax is facing the guardian itself. For example, if there is one, and then the re resolution of that is they find the entrance, right? So you can nest it down. I don't. I know some people will just run whole games using this because it's very easy once you're comfortable with these elements to riff on them and improv in them. And it's great for something if you have a your party and they're in a city and they're exploring and they decide, oh, let's go sneak in this nobleman's villa. You don't have that prepped. Well, you can easily just pull out Five Room Dungeon in your mind and say, okay, how would I lay this out? Okay, I can see some challenges there. I think it works best when you do have a theme, whether it's the nobleman's villa, whether it's the haunted wood, something that you can tie everything in so that you it, it comes across as being, you know, an organic whole as opposed to a bunch of parts that you just threw together. I don't think it is overall a replacement for something like uh, having a real true dungeon layout, something like a mega dungeon or something that's really going to be the centerpiece of a campaign or a, I think really having that all that exploration, or at least something that obviously if you've seen other of my videos, I really dig all that stuff. So I wouldn't say it's a replacement for that. But it's certainly a supplement for those times when you don't have one. Again, they go in a nobleman's villa. You don't have a nobleman's villa mapped out. So what do you do? Use the fire room dungeon. Or in this case, they're in a they're entering a forest hex and they're not moving on. So it's not really part of. They're not 
falling anymore. They're kind of in more of a full investigation mode. Maybe you know what they're trying to find. Maybe you know that there's a hidden shrine they're looking for. So you already have your resolution and you can almost work backwards. Say, I have this hidden shrine. Well, what makes it hidden? Who's guarding it? What makes it difficult to get to, right? All these questions and things you're going to answer in that five room dungeon. You know, that design pattern. Because you're thinking about it, well, how is the shrine remaining hidden? That gives you, answering that question will really tell you about that, you know, entrance slash garden. Well, what is keeping people from getting in there? And now the party can figure out how to get around that. Is there some kind of puzzly thing about the area? Maybe the woods the, is all tangled and the paths are all misleading and maybe the trees are, are, are magic and they move around to kind of make things even more confusing. That could be very much a puzzly element to it. What's keeping people from getting there. And then the setback could be that the, you know, there, there, maybe there's a cult there in the shrine and it was expected to be empty, but now there's somebody there or maybe there's a monster who lairs nearby and they're awoken through this or it could be something else. Night falls and it becomes hard to find, hard to keep on going, but it's not a good place to camp for reasons X, Y, and Z. And then you get to, you know, the Guardian. What is standing in front of this shrine or what is the last thing protecting it? Could be uh, forest creatures, could be some sort of illusion, illusion magic, keep me see here. Could be something like, hey, it's in a cave and the cave, the entrance is, has been, you know, caved in or covered up with massive boulders how do you get those out of the way that's perfectly sensible and then of course in our case we already have the resolution which is hey you found the shrine so for the guy on reddit he already had a climax and the aftermath which which was the party was escorting a girl to try to find her father who was lost in this kind of woods and they were gonna eventually they were gonna hear the father crying they were gonna go run after it and they were gonna find a beast a creature who was using the father's cries or was able to mimic the father's cries to draw them in so they had their that's the climax. We don't know, or he didn't post what the resolution would be, which is probably the fate of the father. So we have the resolution in a sense, or whatever we decide, whether the father's alive or dead, or maybe the father is the creature. I don't know. We have that. We have the climax. And now you just kind of work your way backwards. What is the puzzle? Is it hard to get around the woods? Maybe they have to protect the girl. There's lots of weird creatures in there, and the uh, they have to protect the girl. So maybe that's your puzzly aspect maybe the girl the setback is that the girl runs off she gets scared or she hears her dad or something and she went now the party has to find her again so they were kind of cruising along when they stopped maybe terrain is an element that could have been in that puzzly role-playing sense maybe they got to deal with the daughter and try to get things out of her and that could be a whole social encounter where it's not about moving through the woods so much it's about helping this girl retrace her steps and then of course is there something about these woods that makes it difficult to get to. Maybe it's, you know, they're at the bottom of a cliff and somehow the girl got down there or maybe the father left her down the bottom of the cliff and he scaled to the top and now they have to figure out how to scale to the top. So there you have it. Using Five Room Dungeon and, you know, we've kind of fleshed out this session. So I hope that's a, I, I wanted to make this fast. I'm running up against, I think I'm 13 and a half minutes so far. So I just wanted it to be fast. Go over the basics of it and show how you can use it for something. You know, it's called Five Room Dungeon. Maybe it should be really called like five concept locations. I really think it's, think of it in rooms as looking at it in too narrow a sense. It's really just about looking at spaces instead of looking at them as physical spaces, looking at them as conceptual spaces. And what's the, what's the theme? What are you trying to accomplish in a meta level with these spaces? And you can apply it to any location you want. Remember, you could nest them. In our case, looking at the forest, we kind of nested them already because if the greater adventure is the shrine, then everything we did getting to the shrine, we could look at as being five elements that are nested within the first element of the shrine, which is, <coughs> excuse me, entrance and guardian. So that's it. How to use five room dungeons to, uh, to sort of help improv or flesh out a particular location that you need to get to. If you like these videos and you've enjoyed my videos in the past, I have a Patreon. I've got a coffee page. Please feel free to stop on there and contribute if you, if you feel like it. It would really help me out a lot. Obviously, if you subscribe to the channel and give us the thumbs up on this video, that also helps me out a lot. Uh, you can reach me on Twitter. I'll have links in the show notes. Twitter, Reddit, Facebook. I'm, I'm on all the different social media platforms. And usually I, I, I will get lazy about posting different ones. But if you track me down and ping me, I generally try to answer. So find me wherever you can. But hopefully that's useful to you. And I will talk to you later.